It's not a priority in a classic Grand Prix car, as Sir Sterling Moss will tell you. A long-time supporter of the festival, Sterling's in a van wall that gave Britain its first World Constructors' Championship when Moss and Tony Brooks beat all comers in 1959. It's a fantastic car. I mean, really, it is so beautiful. And, and I must say, this one is feeling very nice. It was not the, ni the nicest car like a 250F, but it won the World Championship, so what could you say? Sterling would have won a driver's championship too had he not been beaten to the title by just one point in 1958 by a tall man with a penchant for bow ties. Of course, he's not the only young driver who sees the checkered board pattern before anyone else. Mike Hawthorne's second season of racing shows him to be another potential world beater. Meticulous in his pre-race preparation, Mike always arrives bright and early at the home Farnham garage. Joined by Hugh, his top mechanic, they go along for a quick inspection of the two-litre Cooper Bristol, which is being prepared for its next event, the top race of the season. The theme of Goodwood this year is Hawthorne to Hamilton. Contrast Lewis with Mike Hawthorne. What kind of figure was he? Mike Hawthorne was an extraordinary character, actually, because Mike Hawthorne was the Hamilton of his day in many respects. 1952, Easter Monday, Goodwood, uh, a little Cooper Bristol Formula 2 car arrived for the race meeting, uh, driven by a young chap, tall, blonde young chap, wearing um, a, a, an anorak, a wind cheater, and a little bow tie, and he immediately won two races and finished second in a third that day and blew some of the established stars literally into the weeds. And he was uh, the son of a garage proprietor from Farnham in Surrey. And he was so effective in driving that Cooper Bristol that Mr. Ferrari noticed his talent, or was informed of his talent, invited him to have a test drive for Ferrari at the end of the year. And Mike ended up driving Ferrari the next year, in 1953, like this car behind me now. But in Grand Prix racing, he beat Fangio to win the French Grand Prix. And thereby he became the first British driver since 1923 to win such a major race. And the cap and the bow tie remained his trademark for what became a tragically short career. Uh, did that tell us that he was a very relaxed, fun-loving sort of character? He was certainly fun-loving. I wouldn't say he was particularly relaxed. He lived life absolutely to the full. The point with Mike Hawthorne was that he didn't know where to draw the line. And occasionally his behaviour would fall over into what today would be grossly unacceptable and what in, in period was regarded as being a bit of a lad. So from Hawthorne 